I recently hit the burnout wall. Hard. I was going along well for a while, particularly when the new year started and I was getting my goals together and I was really trying to make some changes. I was doing regular video uploads, I was doing writing regularly, and I was busting my ass at work, and I was even leaving a little left over for my family at home. And then, shortly around spring break time, a little after spring break, I just crashed. I hit the wall. Too many nights of too little sleep, too much balls to the wall work with too little downtime, and generally just too much effort with too little reward it really took a toll on me so i fell off i lost focus i lost energy i still went through the motions i got up i went to work i paid the bills i took care of the house and the kids but i did very little else i did a lot of time wasting a lot of blazing about and it didn't feel good. I didn't feel like I was resting or relaxing. I felt like I should be doing things and I wanted to do things, but I just had no energy or drive to do them. I was completely wiped out. You may be able to relate to this. You might have had this feeling before, maybe you have it now, where you know you want to do something, you know you should do something, and yet you've been working so hard, focusing so long on a certain project that you just don't have anything left. So unless something has a guaranteed high expected reward to effort ratio, you're not even going to bother with it. So what is burnout? What do we mean by that? Psychology today defines burnout as a state of emotional, mental, and or physical exhaustion brought on by prolonged or repeated stress. Now this definition is helpful as it goes, but really the feeling of exhaustion kind of is stress, right? That feeling of exhaustion in the face of what you have to do, that feeling of overwhelm, that seems to be stress kicking in. What makes it burnout is its pervasiveness, right? Burnout is malicious and it is pervasive. It's the feelings of anxiety, apathy, emptiness, and hopelessness that just won't go away. So it's akin to depression, but anybody can get burnout, not just people who suffer from depression. And I kind of can tell the difference. I can tell when I'm having a depressive episode to when I'm just burnt out. And lately, I mean, one can lead into the other, don't get me wrong. If you are burnt out, that can very quickly translate to depression. But my biggest problem recently has been just this chronic burnout. And all that anxiety and emptiness and hopelessness, that's not even to mention the feelings of guilt. Because burnout does feel like failure. And in today's hustle culture, even if you're not a hustle culture person, we all want to get things done. We all want to be productive. We all feel like we should be productive and we all have things that we want to accomplish in our lives. So we can, the feeling of guilt can arise. The feeling of shame can arise when burnout hits and we just are unable for whatever reason to get our stuff done. None of us want to confess that we can't hack it, but they say the first step is admitting that you have a problem. And so here I am doing that. This is kind of a big step for me because it requires me to admit that something I have been doing, have been choosing to do with my time voluntarily is wrong and destructive. It's a confession of guilt that I myself am causing my own problems. And yet this problem seems so pervasive and so overwhelming that I can't get through it. I can't get past it. I can't get anything done and the thing that's blocking me from getting anything done is me. Can anyone relate? This is part of what burnout feels like. You know, you're normally a productive person and you've got some big goals and some big dreams and you might've been going well for a little while and then suddenly you just hit the wrong lever. You were aiming for the accelerator and you hit the brake or you hit the accelerator a little too hard and you went off the edge. 
But I see why this admission step is the first step. Recognizing that the problem is there, that the problem is yours, and that the problem stems from, or very much is, something you are doing, and therefore it is in your hands to change it, that is the first step towards actually making change. Understanding that the problem is ours and is self-created, the problem is my problem with my burnout is mine and is something that I did. Now, there were external factors involved, and if you're burnt out from work, I understand that there are external pressures being placed on you. If you're burnt out from just dealing with financial stress, that's been part of my issue too. That is another stressor placed on you. If you're stressed out from dealing with family situations or friends or anything else, that is extra stressors placed on you. And all of these can lead to burnout. It's not just one factor. But understanding that the problem is yours does open the door to the possibility of fixing it. And the solution, you ready to hate me? The solution is simple. Notice I said simple, not easy. It's a simple process to bench press a thousand pounds, but still incredibly hard to do. So simple doesn't mean easy. Simple just means it's not complicated. It's not complex. There aren't a whole lot of steps. And everyone is different, right? Everyone has their own process for getting out of burnout. But it seems to to me, in my own personal experience, to come out of a few core things. And I'm not a psychologist, I'm not giving any medical or emotional advice. If you need to talk to a therapist, there are places to do that. All I'm doing is giving my own perspective as someone who has suffered from this before and is currently trying to get through it right now. The solution is to quit doing the negative stuff and replace it with positive stuff. The end. So, when I feel tired, am I choosing to veg out with Netflix or YouTube? In that case, I should turn off the tube, or the computer, and pick up a book instead and feed my mind. When I sit down to write, do I instead distract myself with meaningless activities, usually on the phone? What I need to do then is put the phone away, open up my computer or my notebook, and set a timer or turn on and or turn on some instrumental focus music and get to work? Am I continually putting off what I know I need to do because it feels just too hard to do it in the moment? Then I need to make a list of my top priority activities, just a few of them, my top priority activities each day and not let myself do any time-wasting activities until I've done my top priority ones that day. So ultimately it is simple, right? I need to feed my brain quality content instead of garbage. I need to schedule time for meaningful work, put that work in, and I need to list my top priority activities and dedicate myself to following that list and not letting myself go, not letting myself waste time until I've used some time productively, until I've actually accomplished my goals. Now, obviously, these steps are far more difficult than they appear. They are simple, they're pretty straightforward things to do, but they are not easy. There are a million and one get things done programs out there and you need to figure out what works best for you. You can go research some of those, try them out, or try to develop your own. But in my studies, this is what they all boil down to. Make better decisions. When you're tempted to do a dumb thing, skip it and do a smart thing instead. And keep in mind, you can always procrastinate later. You can always procrastinate tomorrow. Get your stuff done now, procrastinate later on. You can procrastinate procrastinating. Do it. Save your procrastinating for later. Get shit done today. Of course, just so you know, I'm talking to me here. It sounds like I'm giving a tough love speech. I am very, very much talking myself out of the hole. As a matter of fact, it was the act of writing these things down in the script for this video that reminded me that I need to do these things. I've been on a better roll recently. I've been making positive momentum. After about a month of just being dead for the past week, I've been more productive, productive than I had for the entire previous month. And because that's because I've started to do some of these things. I really need to make a more concentrated effort to do it. But I have started getting the ball rolling in motion after a long period of burnout that was, again, not very restful, was not the, the kind of break and relaxation that I needed. It was just a stasis period. 
So sometimes in burnout, you do need a break. Sometimes you really do need to get away from things. But just sitting there in burnout and being miserable that you can't get stuff done and feeling awful is not taking a break. So I'll cover taking a break in a different video. That's a different lesson. That's something I still need to work on myself, properly relaxing. But properly getting back to work, I've got some experience doing this. I've been burned out before and I do suffer from pretty recurring cyclical depression, so I understand how to pull myself out of a hole, even if sometimes it is very, very difficult to do so. In order to even get the ball rolling and come up with these ideas for how to manage my burnout, first I had to actually sit down and remind myself why I want to do what I want to do in the first place. I need to remember my motivations so I know why I want to teach, I want to write, I want to create videos, I want to do all these creative things, and I need to continually remember my why, my purpose behind all that, so that I can drive myself forward. Now, part of that is just my passion for the work, part of that is my passion to take care of my family, and part of it is just I want to challenge myself and see how far I can go, see what I can do with this, and see how many people I can help. I'm really excited about that. But it's hard to let excitement fill you to let it flow out of you when it's just a tiny little spark barely kindled inside of you that is swiftly dying because you've burnt yourself out. So this is my mission now. I'm going to replace time wasting with brain feeding. I'm going to schedule time daily for my creative work. I'm going to list and prioritize my top activities and I'm going to get them done before I move on to any time wasting stuff. I mean, I'm never going to waste time, we all waste time at times, but I am going to get something worthwhile done before I allow myself to go into the time wasting. Again, burnout and letting yourself, just letting yourself be burnt out, that might be a break for you, but it wasn't really a break for me. Being burnt out and not doing the work that I knew I needed to do was not restful or relaxing me. I feel more relaxed when I'm being productive toward my goals. Weirdly enough. Doesn't mean I don't need a break from that too, but if I'm being consistently productive towards my goals, I generally feel pretty good. I have a decent amount of energy and I can continue moving. If I'm not being productive towards my goals, the inertia really, or the lack thereof, saps me and leaves me with very little energy to do anything. So it's kind of a vicious cycle. If you do something, you're more likely to do something else. If you do nothing, you're more likely to do nothing else. So it is. So anyway, that's just how I have been coping with my burnout this time around, and it is helping, it is paying dividends after, again, several weeks, a month of spinning my wheels and just feeling miserable, and I, nothing else has changed radically. I still, my, my workout schedule has fallen off. I'm only working out two to three times a week now. My sleep schedule still sucks as it always does, but I have dedicated myself to focusing on the things that matter and generally I'm feeling better and moving in a more positive direction. Even without fixing my sleep schedule, even without fixing my exercise schedule, I still have more energy and I still am looking at things in a more positive direction. And if you look at my upload schedule, you'll see that I've actually been productive this last week as opposed to the four weeks prior to that. So hopefully I won't have any more gaps like that. I apologize for that, but thank you guys again for watching and please like and subscribe and leave your comments below do you deal with burnout have you ever confronted this problem and if so how'd you get through it because again there's all sorts of ways i'd love to hear your tips and techniques but this is just what i narrow it down to the simple and direct need to get rid of a bad habit and replace it with a better habit you can't just get rid of something because if you don't replace it it'll just come back, right? That's what you need to do. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and until next time, good writing and good luck. Switch that around. Good luck and good writing. Peace.